we're in episode four of our amazing podcast. And it's only amazing because you're watching it and you care about what it is that we're saying because it's important to you. And you know that um, our objective here is to have uh, basically realistic information about things that are being shared on uh, the internet or social media or, or just in general news. And uh, today's topic is all about the way technology is being used to uh, impact our work and how we education and how we educate ourselves. And uh, most people are there. There's this interesting parallel between an individual and somebody who's an individual inside an organization. It's weird. It's a weird parallel. I'm not going to lie. Because if you look at information and this is, you know, you're only as smart as your searches on the internet and you have to be really curious about what it is that the information is trying to tell you and not telling you that as a individual inside of an organization, typically you're like a little bit more reserved. But if you're representing yourself, you're kind of like, mm, I can do it. I can make my own decisions. So our uh, I'm, the information I'm going to share with you is a little bit about both sides of the conversation as how, um, in terms of how people are adopting advanced technology. And what is advanced technology? Well, it, it really depends on, again, where you're coming from. Like advanced technology for somebody like Elon Musk is some sort of whatever that brain thing is that he likes to read people's mind. Like that's his advanced technology. But if you talk to some of our public educators, advanced technology is getting a Microsoft whiteboard in their in their room versus a chalkboard, which was something invented 20 years ago. So where you're at in your technology adoption is really going to influence how you receive this information. If you're an individual and you are the one who always buys the the latest and greatest gadget, then you're going to probably appreciate this more than somebody who is like still driving their classic Ford and you love all of the, the um, technical hardcore mechanics of something of, of an automotive like that. So man, maybe that wasn't fair because I have both a advanced car and a, my old uh, Tahoe that I'll probably never get rid of. But my point is, is where you are in your own technology adoption story and how you use technology in your life to do your job, to do life, to conversate with your friends and family, uh, how you use it to make decisions is, is really how you would hear this, this kind of information. So there's a couple of things that are out there today that we'll just address. And one is this adaptive technology. Adaptive technology is kind of a free freaky term for people who, who are thinking of the whole Terminator thing or AI machina where the, the bot is basically learning how to make decisions on its own. And, and yeah, we, we probably will get there, but we're certainly nowhere near that today. So um, there's three different articles about adaptive technology. Remember, adaptive technology is the software, not the hardware. Hardware is the robot. It's the it's the screen, right? Um, the the hardware that we use to distribute the software uh, only makes the experience a little bit more tangible because other than that, it's just a bunch of digital code, right? So adaptive technology is something that is supposed to be iterative based on the user's input, like what we do at PeopleWork. The com it's a community driven AI inspired data, um, basically magic pool, <laughs> that the more you use and the different ways that you use, it changes your experience based on what you're asking the platform to do for you, the technology to do for you. So it's not anything to be afraid of. In fact, it can actually advance and change the whole game of, of learning and working and doing things because it's individually driven. So uh, this particular article is saying I'm going to reinforce what this the what it is to have iterative uh, technology in the learning space. That means that while there could be a teacher that kind of governs what is happening on you know just human exchange in a particular classroom or learning environment, the tools that a student have is there to identify their own strengths and weaknesses and in real time, adapt a learning plan to basically work at the pace that their brain and their work style is working 
I think that's a, a pretty good, good use case. In the job market, uh, a different way of applying some of that adaptive technology. Uh, this is interesting from, well, I mean, this is whole, this is all from you. Actually, this is from United Nations and their labor, um, their labor campaigns. This is, I think this is kind of cool. So what they're talking about is basically having a partner, basically some sort of assistant um, that is guiding that, that worker, that employee, regardless of what level or type of work, guide them through course correction in real time. That's kind of cool because you probably would uh, avoid a few mistakes um, that cost time and cost money. And like for me at people work, I don't care if people spend 80 hours or, or 10 hours. If the job was quality, was right, and uh, they were invested in it, the job is, I, mean, I consider the job done. I know that kind of freaks out some people in, in the employed people, but um, you know, I don't think that's, that's going to be feasible to keep that mind frame for a long time, but that's a separate conversation. So where we're at in technology and bots, uh, it's fascinating in terms of the most extreme conversation that's happening right now. It's that adaptive, it's that iterative, it's a software that works with the human experience in real time. Then, uh, there is another two layers over that, but we have a different webinar on that that you'd have to go to our website for to find and read more content about at there. If you are somebody who is not necessarily aware of what iterative technology is, I would encourage you to do your own research. Uh, the, the naysayers are like, it's going to warp the mind of people and it could expose people to information that is not necessarily beneficial, but I actually think they're referencing social media <laughs> and social media is not necessarily iterative because the, the platforms algorithm is designed to benefit the platform, not the person. And that's really the distinction between how those two use cases um, can be applied. Well, I, I could probably geek out on this with you for a long time. Uh, I There's positives and negatives to the use of each one of these um, to iterative technology, to technology in general. Um, however, you receive that software and the hardware that's using to give you that experience. I mean, I, my, I don't know. I think that's kind of dealer's choice. But where the software was designed, um, the motivation of the software, that's really what's important because the motivation, the goal of the design of the software uh, really defines you, your your outcomes. So yeah, if there's somebody freaky, like a sociopath um, that does things for malice and they're the ones creating this platform and you use it, well, you, you might be going into a maniacal plan. But if you use um, a platform that is designed and the goal of it is to do something better, for example, like at People Work, where we're helping people move into the future and prepare for a future instead of um, feel like they're being left behind, um, you know, you, that's the kind of research that I really encourage you to do. So, yep, I'm Kim. And as always, we're here helping people evolve with work. If you have a topic that is interesting to you, something that you're concerned about, in the whole realm of working, earning, learning, and connecting, share it. We will do our digging and research more about the topic to help give you a good, an interesting point of view and some good food for thought.